speaking of learning a lesson, I think we're about to get one, hopefully, uh, from John Nowicki. John, welcome again to the show. Thanks for, for schlepping in here on a Sunday morning, both of you, for coming in on uh, all of us. Thank God we don't have one of those cams in here. Uh, you, actually, you guys are looking styling. I'm a little little, <laughs> little rougher rougher for wear right now. But um, we recently, you know, post-election, and our, our guest John is about to explain that, again, nothing in this world is coincidental, mm. uh, to the top of the Rhode Island News Mess, we were all treated this week to a video where a group of individual citizens were accused of all sorts of things. We're not going to dignify those comments here. Uh, for something called Rhode Island Roadmap, um, which has sort of taken the media storm by world in the last 72 hours as we've all woken up to this grand master plan for all of our lives. John... What was that? Uh, you're, you're a younger guy here. What was that show, Lizzie Explains It All to You or something? <laughs> something like that. Maybe, maybe we could have a segment. John Explains It All Car- to Us. Carissa <laughs> Explains Car- It Car- All. Carissa Explains yeah. It All. Thank you. Um, John Nowicki, tell us. Explain it all to me. What's going on here? Oh, I love that. I, I have such a big ego now. Uh, Roadmap RI has been dubbed and pushed through during an election season and now during the holiday season in hopes to... Uh, move through what can only be explained as a draconian effort to truly take a power grab of our property rights under the guise of an economic development plan, which it certainly is not. Uh, And we've seen through the documentation of Roadmap RI and through the actions of the people who are putting forth this this effort, and eventually will be legislation. They're moving this through, uh, again, during an election season and during a holiday season to hope that nobody noticed. Well, all the liberty preservation groups in Rhode Island have certainly noticed, and we've stood up and said we will not stand for this. this these are unelected bureaucrats that are, taking, that, are, that are coming in and going to analyze each area, each community within Rhode Island, and if it's not socially equitable enough. In other words, there's not enough of what they see as being the proper distribution of people based upon their identity and on, and on their wealth that they are going to change that through the expanded eminent domain laws that have been slowly creeping into our lives and into our societies. And as we take this money from HUD, we're relinquishing our rights as a, as a sovereign uh, state. And that is why they're having these, quote-unquote, public discussion sessions during a time when nobody really is they're either burnt out from the election or not really paying attention in hopes of being able to move this through. So the Rhode Island uh, Tea Party, the Rhode Island Center for Freedom and Prosperity, uh, some libertarians and others are working together to bring awareness of this effort to make sure that the people of Rhode Island know what they're getting into prior to having to live under it. And we have found that when people understand what they're being subjected to and in the underhanded manner for which it's being implemented, that they're waking up and they're standing up and they're saying, no way. I, I'm confused. I, I thought ultimately the goal of our nation, and in, in, in I'll say it in the moral and philo- philosophical sense, uh, and I'm someone in my early 50s, so I have lived through an, a period of epic change culturally in this country. Um, I thought the ultimate goal was to become a nation and a society that was that was both color, sexuality, religious blind, if you will. I thought that was the goal. Exactly right. Any decision made based upon somebody's identity, and somebody's identity could be anything, like you said, their gender, their sexual orientation, their race, their creed, any decision based upon that is subjective and arbitrary and has nothing to do with the content of that person's character. They're looking to take these arbitrary identity parts of our society and to paint the state based upon that and not allow people to simply be free enough to make their own decisions to live where they wish to be and apply the, the concept that certain elements in life are earned. They're not given, like dignity and like property and so forth. And as we saw this week, uh, the, why, the big question, if you look at the video that is online in relation to how the people who were opposing Roadmap RI were re- addressed, you will see that the tactics involved with this effort have nothing to do with the merits of the legislation and the, and the plan. It has all to do with ad hominem attacks against anybody 
who will oppose it. And if you read from the appendix of the social of the uh, roadmap RI documentation, and you go to the nearly the very end, you'll see that part of their stated tactic is to use terms which most of us are. Uh, are, are, are uncomfortable with using, like racist, like segregation, in order to implement an economic plan. Try to put that together. Try to understand what, exactly what's happening there. This is, this is an effort to usurp our rights, and they're doing it under the guise of an economic plan and at a time when most people are not noticing in order to take away Rhode Islanders' rights, and Rhode Islanders need to wake up right now. If we take money from the federal government, the federal government is going to start making decisions for us, and it's already happened in New York. It's hap uh, this, this piece principle has been applied in Woonsocket, and we can see what, what the effects are if you, uh, if you re Google these efforts. Uh, elsewhere in the nation. Yeah, as we like to say here on the show, we know how the movie ends. Right. Um, first of all, what I found dispiriting, I, I guess I was under the assumption that the type of ad hominem attacks that were, gen that were generated by crowd, uh, the kind of ugly behavior, mob mentality, I thought that was something as a nation we were trying to get away from. I, I also was under the impression that we thought at this point that if you disincentivize folks to try to succeed based on their own individual talents, merits, hard work, that ultimately you create a nation of folks who don't know how to succeed and are incapable of success. I also thought we were, as a state, moving away from the notion that a lifetime of reappropriation of personal assets of other people was something that hadn't worked and that we were looking to create opportunities for people not create handouts. I, I guess that's what's kind of stunning about all this. Right, right. Well, the, and, there, and the point needs to be driven home to the folks who are making the decisions. So one of the efforts that I'm leading is uh, an effort to um, apply the principles that this plan is implementing and, uh, and, and make those, again, who are making the decisions live, live with the results. So we want them to lead by example, and this effort is uh, <laughs> General Assembly members uh, homes for social equity. So what we'd like to do is take the eminent domain laws that exist already on the books and apply the principles that Chief, Governor Chafee has uh, stated, stated already, that, the, um, that they'll analyze the demographics of each community, and then if they're not in line with their arbitrary decisions as to what it should be, they're going to start usurping property and make uh, that the face of that community the, the way they want it to be. And so we thought, well, let's see, uh, Sheldon Whitehouse lives in Newport, and really there's only 10% of people who are minorities in there, so we thought we would take his home. <laughs> Uh, we'd give them fair market value. Don't get me wrong. But the market is really good right now, so I'm sure we'll get lots of money for it. And then we thought we would subdivide it into smaller units and uh, and allow people to live in, in his house. And we want to go down the line and apply these principles, and we hope people will help us out. Because if we have to live under these rules, I think the first people to start living under them are the ones who are going to sign the document to allow it to happen. So here on the coalition today, you've had libertarians promoting taxation, redistribution of wealth, <laughs> <laughs> reapportionment, <laughs> condemnation of private property. God bless America. Uh, <laughs> somehow I think the sarcasm level <laughs> is getting off the charts. Um, We've only got a minute or so left when you hear the happy music. One love. Yeah, one love. Um, John, we're going to go around the room here. John, where, where can we find and where can we follow both on social media and on the web your efforts to oppose this? Uh, mostly Facebook, of course. This is uh, a quick effort uh, to address this. So check out uh, uh, Roadmap RI and uh, General Assembly uh, uh, houses for social equity. Are there, is there? Wh when is the next meeting? When is? I, I believe there's some stuff there'll, coming up this there'll week. Be a, there'll be a, a, a prairie meeting, which is a group that is opposing this property uh, rights uh, advocates of Rhode Island. That'll be on Wednesday, and then the uh, people implementing this plan will be on Thursday at 9 a.m. at the state house, one of the state house building, not the actual state house. Okay, uh, and so they should follow you. They should find you on social media. Um, so that they can follow your efforts. Uh, again, congratulations. Welcome to the show. We hope you're going to contribute on a regular basis, both in terms of blogging and 
whatever events that you're helping run. I would love to. Uh, Justin, tell us what's, what's coming up. What's next on the calendar for Regulate Rhode Island? So, yeah, you can find us at RegulateRI.com or on Facebook, uh, Twitter. Uh, but on Tuesday, coming up on November 18th, so this Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. at Brown University in uh, Room 120 of List Art Building, we're having a panel discussion or a community forum, rather, uh, Mason Tavert, who's a national leader of the uh, movement, and uh, a few other panels will be there. So join us. Great. CoalitionRadio.us, Facebook.com, is Coalition Radio. Thanks for listening. This will be podcast live this week. We'll see you soon.